good day everyone so today the video that we are going to make is about estimating the evaporation rate nothing but a boiler rate from a batch reactor and how this is going to vary between normal distillation and vacuum distillation let us see so just consider this is a batch reactor equipped with a jacket and now coming to this case the case is estimating the boiler from a 5 kl ss reactor containing 80% of toluene with a jacket utility as steam at 1 kg per cm2 gauge pressure so this is the scenario we need to estimate the boil up in two cases the first is normal distillation and the second one is vacuum distillation so first of all let's make or try to record the inputs which are given input reactor capacity it's 5 kl solvent available it's toluene boiling point of toluene is 110 degrees at one atmosphere pressure occupancy is 80% jacket utility is steam utility pressure is 1 kg per cm2 kg so this is the data which is given now we have to estimate the boil up from the reactor so the first scenario that i am going to take is normal distillation okay for a capacity for a reactor capacity of 5 kl the heat transfer area is going to be approx 12.75 meters square so i am going to place a link of a video like how to estimate the reactor heat transfer area it will be placed in the description please check it so occupancy is 80% here so the effective heat transfer area is going to be 12.75 multiplied with 80% the effective heat transfer area is going to be 10.2 meter square now coming to the jacket utility jacket utility is steam and the pressure is 1 kg per cm2 kg pressure so if you are able to refer the steam tables you will be able to identify the temperature of the steam at 1 kg per cm2 gauge pressure i am going to place a link for the steam tables in the description please check it so the temperature is going to be around 120 degrees degree centigrade as previously mentioned if both the fluids uh if both the fluids of a uh, if both the fluids available at a reactor heat transfer area are in gaseous phase so automatically the lmtd like if both the fluids during heat transfer are in gaseous phase then lmtd equals to delta t so in this case the lmtd 
or delta t is going to be 120 minus the boiling point of toluene that is 110 it's 10 degrees so before going to the topic let's uh, i'll give to i'll try to give a brief about this how to perform the boiler plate calculation the first thing is we have to understand the demand and the demand is represented by the formula mcp delta t or m lambda or it can be the combination of both like mcp delta t plus m lambda it can be the combination of both and coming to the equation of supply that is u a lmtd so in this case we are going to vaporize toluene from a 5 kl reactor so we have to use the formula for demand as m lambda why because here in this case there is a phase change happening from liquid to vapor so i will be considering m lambda demand equals to m into lambda the latent heat for toluene is around 90 kilocalorie per kg so in this demand equation we know the latent heat lambda and we don't know the boiler rate which is represented by the letter m in this case we have to apply we have to calculate the supply the supply equals to u a lmtd coming to u nothing but a overall heat transfer coefficient since it's a ss reactor i'll be taking the overall heat transfer coefficient as 250 kilocalorie per hour meter square degree centigrade if it's a gl reactor we can take in the range of 100 to 150 as in this case both the fluids are going to be in gaseous phase i have taken it as 250 if one is a liquid and the other is going to be in gaseous phase i should have taken as around 300 so here in this case i'll be taking it as 250 and we know the area the effective heat transfer area it is 10.2 meter square and we know the lmtd it's nothing but a delta t here it is around 10 degrees centigrade so the supply is 10 into 10.2 into 250 kilocalorie per hour we know the supply and we know the demand nothing but m into 90 now we have to calculate the unknown parameter nothing but the m it is the boiler plate perform the energy balance nothing but demand equals to supply so it is equals to 2500 sorry 25500 now m equals to 25500 divided by 90 it is in kgs per hour if you want to convert this kgs per hour into liter per hour just divide with the density of toluene that is 0.867 liter per hour based on this calculation we can say if it's a normal distillation with steam as utility at 1 kg per centimeter square pressure we will be able to get 327 liter per hour of boil up in one hour that too it's the initial hour if you are going to distill out further the distillation rate will reduce why because 
as the volume inside the reactor is going to reduce the effective heat transfer area will also get reduced so as the distillation time is getting prolonged the evaporation rate will reduce anyhow this is the case for normal distillation now let's try to check the case for vacuum distillation i'll be using some other parameters as same like uh i'll try to perform from demand demand equals to m into lambda here in this case lambda is going to vary a bit why because under under vacuum distillation the latent heat of any solvent will increase slightly but it's not huge there will be some marginal increase anyhow i am going to take it as the same 90 kilo calorie per kg i'll try to estimate or i'll try to calculate the supply the case is for vacuum distillation the supply again it's going to be u a lmtd here in this case the vacuum is around 700 let's say 700 mm hg at 700 mm hg of vacuum tolin boils at approx 42 degrees this can be estimated using antony calculation sorry antony equation i'll try to give a demo about this antony equation in the coming videos i'll try to use the same utility since it's a pure solvent i'll be taking the same utility that is steam at 1 kg per cm2 kg pressure so here in this case i am having both again in the vapor phase or gas phase one on side i am having tolin at boiling point and on the other side i am having steam as utility so lmtd is equals to again delta t so lmtd equals to One twenty degrees minus forty-two. This is our LMTD. The area also remains same. Effective area we can say. Let's again ten point two meter square. Coming to the overall heat transfer coefficient. As the delta T is going to be increased. so in the case of a normal distillation it is only 10 degrees while coming to this vacuum distillation the distil the lmtd is going to be around 78 degrees centigrade as this lmtd is going to increase automatically the overall heat transfer coefficient will increase uh, sorry the overall heat transfer coefficient will get reduced in this case i'll take the overall heat transfer coefficient in the range of 200 to 250 i will consider it as average 225 kilo calorie per ha meter square degree centigrade so the supply is ulmtd overall heat transfer coefficient is 225 effective heat transfer area is 10.2 and the lmtd is 78 now let's perform the energy balance nothing but equating demand and supply on one hand demand is m into 90 on the other hand the supply is 179000 m equals to 179000 divided by 90 it's almost 2000 kg 
now let's try to convert this into liters so 1989 divided by 0.867 it's the density the boiler plate under vacuum is 2294 it's almost 2300 liter you may get a doubt that in practical cases why we will be not able to get that amount of boiler so the reason for it is whenever you are going to perform vacuum distillation the reason is whatever the product that is available in tolin or any such solvents they are going to be having some thermally sensitive nature so to avoid any degradation of such materials we are going to maintain a safe delta t of 5 to 10 degrees that means if we want to if we want to distill out tolin under vacuum we will be giving a range like we have to distill out tolin under vacuum below 50 degrees centigrade in such a case in order to avoid the degradation of material inside due to higher skin temperatures we are going to maintain a jacket temperature of hardly 55 to 60 degrees so we are going to distill out the solvent in a safe manner if you are having only tolin as a pure solvent in a reactor you can perform normal distillation sometimes if you want to distill out the tolin under vacuum so in such a case you can give a hot water set point or you can use steam also why because it's a single solvent and there is no product inside that so there won't be any thermal degradation happening but if you are having a product inside the reaction mass or inside the solvent so in such a case better to avoid using the utilities with higher delta t's if you are going to use the utilities with higher delta t's automatically what will happen is due to the higher skin temperature the metals will degrade so this is the reason why we got such a higher value in this calculation and practically it's not possible so as per the calculation we got this if you are able to perform distillation under vacuum by maintaining such higher delta t's so maybe you can attain these kind of boil ups but whenever you are having a product inside the solvents try avoiding such higher delta t's okay so that this video if you like our video you can subscribe and you can share this videos with your colleagues or with your friends so finally these videos are available in our automated app like our android app which is provided with some of the automated calculators like the condenser areas the boiler plate estimations the vacuum pump capacity estimations and all so they all were included in this video sorry in this app on the play store you can download it for free so thanks for watching our video